I took my store-bought sandwich and headed towards my truck, ready for another long trip ahead. Today was meant to be any regular shift of mine, driving to my destination, doing some heavy lifting, then heading home to the comfort of my bed. I reread the instructions on the checklist one more time before heading off, my head held high, anticipating the road ahead. I turned on the radio to calm my nerves, as this order of items were particularly important and fragile. The buyer, of course, would be displeased if these were given to him damaged, and my boss was at his last straw with my work ethic. You see, lately there have been mysterious vandalism attempts against the company, and our boss was convinced that the suspects included me and three other co-workers, considering how we are mainly in charge of the delivery. Nonetheless, I had confidence that I would be able to drop these deliveries off in crisp condition, with no damages left behind. As the sun started to set, I turned on my headlights as I awaited the long track of the highway ahead of me. I knew this would probably be one of my longest trips to complete, but it didn't occur to me that this would be my last. It became dark and unusually foggy, did the weather forecast mention the fog? Either way, I had a job to complete and work on. My eyes were drifting off to sleep as it was already 3 am at this point, but I had to drive for another hour before I could reach the hard point. The gushes of wind intensified, and the joyful songs on the radio did not help against the eerie sounds of crickets and owls. Suddenly, I saw a ghastly figure standing right in front of me, staring at me through the headlights. I gasped as I rushed to hold the brakes, the squeaking of my tires against the concrete heightening the intense atmosphere. My heart was violently beating against my ribcage, thinking that I could have caused a crime scene in the middle of the highway. Yet, the dark figure of the man had consumed my entire body, his eyes bore into mine with an energy I couldn't make out. Whatever he wanted, I had no idea of entertaining him. Excuse me, is there anything you need? I asked out the window. The figure continued to stare right at me. After a few moments, he finally spoke, I need a ride. I lost a dare with my buddies and now I'm left here on the highway. Guilt rushed through me as I realized that he must have been drunk himself, disheveled from most likely staying in the cold for hours with no one to help. Then again, I wasn't sure about trusting a hitchhiker who would randomly appear in front of my truck, out of all vehicles, for a ride. At first I couldn't decide what to do, but my guilt overruled my suspicions. All right. Get in, and we'll find shelter together, I muttered my voice trembling as I unlocked the truck's passenger door. The hitchhiker's expression shifted from one of eerie calm to a twisted grin as they climbed into the cab, their presence sending shivers down my spine. The highway stretched on, the asphalt vanishing into the inky darkness. Rain and thunder came into the picture and drummed relentlessly on the truck's roof, the windshield wipers barely keeping up with the downpour. I focused on the road ahead my grip on the steering wheel tightening. The hitchhiker did not help the situation either. He started narrating these unsettling tales that spoke of tragic accidents on this very road, of truckers who had gone mad after driving this route, and of a sinister entity that haunted those who dared to pick up hitchhikers on stormy nights like this. What was worse is that the more he narrated, the more his twisted smile grew. I couldn't shake the feeling that I had made a grave mistake. But it was too late to turn back now. The rain had transformed into a torrential deluge, reducing visibility to almost nothing. I needed to find a place to pull over and wait out the storm. Up ahead, I spotted the dim glow of a roadside motel. I decided to take my chances there, hoping to find safety in the presence of other people. As I pulled into the hotel's parking lot, the hitchhiker's sinister grin widened, and they whispered, you can't escape it, you know. Ignoring their ominous warning, I parked the truck and hastily made my way to the hotel's reception area. The night clerk, an elderly man with tired eyes, welcomed me with a nod. I explained my situation, hoping to get a room for the night. The clerk's face darkened when he noticed the hitchhiker lingering at the entrance. You didn't bring them in here, did you? He asked, his voice trembling. I nodded reluctantly. I couldn't leave them out there in that storm. The clerk's eyes widened with fear. 
He leaned in closer and whispered, you should have. That thing is no ordinary hitchhiker. It's a malevolent spirit that preys on those who give it a ride. It feeds on their fear, and it never lets them go. Before I could respond, a bone-chilling wail echoed through the hotel. I turned to see the hitchhiker, their form flickering like a dying light bulb. Their eyes, once empty, now glowed with an unnatural, terrifying fire. The hotel's lights flickered, and the temperature plummeted. It was as if the very air had turned to ice. I realized with a sinking feeling that I had unwittingly brought a vengeful spirit into this place. The clerk handed me a small vial filled with a glowing substance. This is your only chance, he said. It's an ancient protection charm. You need to use it to banish that thing before it devours your soul. I clutched the vial tightly and turned toward the hitchhiker, who had begun to advance, their form contorted and grotesque. With trembling hands, I uncorked the vial and flung its contents at the spirit. A blinding light erupted, and the spirit let out a deafening scream before dissipating into a swirling mist. The temperature returned to normal, and the lights stopped flickering. The motel was once again bathed in a warm, comforting glow. The clerk sighed in relief. You're lucky you had that charm, he said, his voice shaky. But remember, the road can be a dark and dangerous place, especially on nights like this. Be cautious of who you pick up, for not all hitchhikers are what they seem. With those haunting words, I checked into a room, shaken but alive. However, when I returned in the morning for my truck, I realized with grave horror that the delivery parcels were destroyed, most likely from the encounter of the evil spirit that I had encountered last night. Shattered glass spilled across the floor, and I knew this time I was not safe of my boss wrath. In the end, I was fired under suspicion of the mysterious causes of vandalism against the company. However, I kept my optimistic character. At least I was protected from that hitchhiker, and I could not afford to be finifugal in life. Story 2 This time, I was sure that tonight would feel normal. I needed this time to not see the ghost that has been haunting my entire being. I did not want to encounter the ghost, neither did I want to see her long hair, her black eyes and her pale skin that was drawn with blood coming from her head. The screeches that she would make every single time I first encountered her, the chloric smell that emitted into the atmosphere when she was around. If I looked carefully, I noticed that it was the same girl who died in the accident a week ago. I was terrified. I wanted nothing to do with the nightmares anymore. If that horrific accident had never happened last week, everything would have been normal. You see, in one of my longer shifts, I was peacefully driving on the highway and listening to the harmonious songs on the radio, when all of a sudden I saw my life flash before my eyes. A motorcyclist swerved on the left and came crashing with me, his body being crushed as he died on impact. My heart leapt out of my throat as I watched his lifeless body being carried away by the ambulance. I was taken to the police station where I ended up being interrogated for the death of the motorcyclist. Thankfully, the officers let me go as the accident occurred due to the horrible weather, which neither the motorcycle or my truck could handle. Nonetheless, that didn't save me from his family that was distraught and depressed from their daughter's death. Their cries spoke a thousand words for how much hurt they were suffering through my actions. Guilt had made a place in my heart as I couldn't possibly imagine what it must feel like to lose a family member. Nonetheless, I had to continue with my job of shipping parcels, praying to God that these situations never happen again. However, my prayers were not heard, and a ghastly figure in which I could only describe having an eerie malevolent energy came in every single shift, every single nightmare, and I could always feel its presence over me. I really prayed that this night would be different, this time I could drive through the night in peace. I wanted this to END. Unfortunately, I wasn't the person who always had luck on their side, and an awful chloric smell engulfed the entire truck. I watched in horror as the same, dreadful ghost came once again to haunt my night shift. My lungs weren't working as she came closer and closer to my face, my skin mirroring the paleness of hers. I tried to look at any emotion in her eyes, 
in the scars of her cheeks, in the texture of her lips. But nothing. The eerie figure stood still as a statue, her eyes boring into mine as I physically was restrained from moving. White we stared at what felt like an eternity, she screamed, the chloric smell intensifying inside the truck. My heart raced as I watched her materialize before me, her ethereal form wavering in the dim light of the highway. The truck's engine sputtered and died, plunging us into a suffocating silence. Panic clawed at my throat, making it difficult to breathe. She moved closer, her pitch black eyes locked onto mine, and a sinister grin spread across her translucent face. I fumbled for the car keys, desperately trying to restart the engine, but they slipped from my trembling fingers and clattered to the floor. The ghostly girl's laughter echoed around me, a haunting melody that sent shivers down my spine. She reached out with spectral fingers, her touch icy and electric, sending shockwaves of fear through my body. I could finally feel her true intentions and emotions, I could feel her anger, her thirst for retribution, and the weight of her tragic death pressing down on me like a vice. As I cowered in the driver's seat, I realized I had to stand against her. There was no time for answers, only survival. I am not dealing with this again. I screamed. With a final surge of strength, I managed to turn the key and the engine roared to life. The headlights illuminated the ghostly figure one last time, and she let out a blood-curdling scream that seemed to shake the very foundations of my soul. Tires screeched as I floored the gas pedal, leaving the vengeful spirit behind on that forsaken stretch of highway. My heart pounded, and my hands trembled as I drove on, haunted by her chilling presence that still trickled at the back of my mind. Beads of sweat ran through my neck, and I continued to venture through the night, praying that my nightmares could finally be over. Story 2 I'm a long-haul trucker, and I've seen my fair share of eerie places along the highways, but nothing could have prepared me for the night I pulled into that forsaken rest stop. The clock had just struck midnight when I spotted the rusty sign on the side of the road, almost obscured by overgrown weeds. Rest stop one mile, it read. My eyelids were heavy with exhaustion, and the relentless rain tapping on my windshield only made it worse. I decided to pull over. It was one of those nights where everything felt wrong, and I needed a break. The rest stop seemed abandoned, but that was typical for this hour. I parked my rig under the flickering overhead lights, grabbed my thermos, and stepped out into the deluge. As I walked toward the restrooms, I couldn't help but feel a deep sense of unease. The place was eerily silent, not even the usual distant hum of highway traffic. I chalked it up to the storm and headed inside. Inside, the fluorescent lights buzzed overhead, casting a sickly pallor over everything. The flickering bulbs only intensified the feeling of dread that had settled in my gut. I washed my face, trying to shake off the unease. But then, as I was about to leave, I noticed the logbook. It was tattered, its pages yellowed with age, and it lay on the edge of the sink as if it had been left there intentionally. The cover was weathered, bearing the faint remnants of a once prominent emblem. Curiosity got the better of me, and I began flipping through the entries. The first page revealed an intricate script, handwritten in elegant ink strokes, which seemed to belong to another era. However, I quickly regretted my decision. The entries were disturbing, to say the least. Truckers who had visited this rest stop had written about strange figures lurking in the shadows, unexplained disappearances, and a pervasive sense of dread that had gripped them. It sent chills down my spine, and I couldn't help but wonder if there was any truth to these tales. I started to question the person who had filled these pages, the journeys they had undertaken, and the mysteries they had encountered. As I continued to read, I heard a faint, muffled sound outside. It was like a whisper, barely audible over the sound of the rain. I rushed to the window and peered out, but I saw nothing but darkness. Am I going crazy? I whispered to myself, thinking that this would be the figment of my imagination. Yet, something felt surreal about those sounds, as if it was almost sinful to notice the eerie atmosphere. I reminded myself that I had a job to attend to, and I was only staying for the night. 
However, when I returned to the logbook, I saw that the last entry had been made just hours ago. It read, I can hear them whispering. They won't leave me alone. The sound of whispers seemed to echo through the restroom, growing louder and more insistent. Panic clawed at my throat as I realized I was not alone. There was indeed another shadow lurking beside me, and my lungs felt stagnant as I couldn't breathe at all. I rushed out of the restroom and back into the rain, my heart pounding. I couldn't shake the feeling that something malevolent was lurking in that place, something that fed on the fear of those who ventured there. Forget about my tiredness, this experience on its own shook my entire being. As I sped away from the rest stop, I couldn't help but wonder about the truckers who had left those entries in the logbook. Had they ever made it out? Or had they become victims of whatever evil force haunted that forsaken place? To this day, I can't help but ask myself, what was it that whispered in the darkness that night? I had left that cursed rest stop far behind, but the whispers, those haunting whispers, they still lingered in my ears. The rain had turned into a relentless downpour, making visibility almost non-existent. My knuckles were white as I clutched the steering wheel, determined to put as much distance between me and that place as possible. I turned on the radio, hoping that music would ease my mind from the terror that I had experienced. It was no longer my business to inquire about what happened in that haunted place, and I wanted these mind games to be over. My radio crackled to life with static, and then, through the interference, I heard it, a faint, mournful voice. Help me. My heart skipped a beat. I scanned the road ahead, but there was nothing but darkness and sheets of rain. I thought I must have imagined it, a byproduct of the unsettling encounter at the rest stop. Stop with the mind games. I mumbled to myself, yet I didn't know if that was heard by another entity that was lurking inside this truck. But then I heard it again, closer this time, as if the voice were right there in the cab with me. Please, help me. I glanced nervously at the passenger seat, half expecting to see a spectral figure materializing beside me. But there was nothing. I was alone, or so I thought. The voice grew more desperate, more pleading. I need your help. Don't ignore me. My instincts told me to keep driving, to ignore the voice and get as far away as possible. I reminded myself that I was done with these mind games. But my conscience, my innate sense of duty, compelled me to listen. What if this was another lost soul in need of assistance? Guilt consumed me at the thought of ignoring them. Where are you? I finally stammered, my voice trembling. I'm trapped, the voice replied, its tone filled with anguish. I need you to find me. I continued to drive, my eyes scanning the road, searching for any sign of the source of that haunting voice. It seemed to be coming from the dense thicket on the side of the highway. I pulled my rig over once more, my heart pounding as I ventured into the rain-soaked darkness. Air filled my lungs as I prepared for the worst. I stumbled through the mud and underbrush, following the voice that grew louder with each step. And then, there she was, a young woman, drenched and shivering, standing beside a gnarled tree. Her eyes were wide with terror, her clothes torn and tattered. Please, she whimpered, help me get out of here. I approached cautiously, my skepticism warring with my sympathy. Who are you? What happened? Even if I felt guilty, I couldn't trust her so easily. Tears streamed down her face as she explained that she had been in a car accident on this very stretch of road years ago. Her car had careened into the thicket, and she had been trapped there ever since, her spirit unable to move on. I suppose I can help. But will you promise that is all you need me to do? Yes. I promise. Thank you so much for your help. We searched through the thicket, glancing everywhere I could under the thunderous rain. I had almost given up, if it wasn't for the girl's sobs and cries of wanting to be free from the world. Surprisingly, I felt more comforted than before, finally knowing that she was just a lost soul who wanted freedom as well. The more we ventured, the more we shared our interests and deepest life secrets, and I grew more sympathetic to her situation. 
She found out over the years that her father had planned her death, as he never wanted a daughter. But he couldn't kill her so easily, or he would have lost his power and status. I don't want revenge if I'm being honest. I only want peace. I want to finally rest and be done with this cruel world. She explained. As we marched on, we finally found her car, and without hesitation, I helped her out of the thicket, my hands passing through her cold, ethereal form. She shivered as she was the first time she had walked this far in years, and she could finally smile as she knew her freedom was near. As we stood there, the rain gradually began to subside, and a sense of calm settled over us. She thanked me, her voice fading as she finally found the peace she had been searching for. I returned to my truck, my mind a whirlwind of questions and emotions. Had I truly encountered another lost soul in need of help, or was it all a manifestation of my own fears? I may never know, but one thing was certain, I appreciated the life I do have, and I'm grateful for the opportunities that I have been given, 